Uh, hi. I, I have a question. What is coding? That's a great question. It's kind of about telling a computer what to do with specific instructions made just by you, but it's really about so many other things. So please listen up now to the words that I sing. It's about solving problems and finding a way to make our lives better. Well, we work and we play. It's about breaking things down, then building them up, and working through challenges and not giving up. It's about asking questions, not just words on a screen. It's inventing new things, things the world's never seen. It's about imagination and creating new dreams that can change your life and help you grow wings. It's about, perhaps most of all, it's about people like me and you, the big and the small, because you see, because you see. The game you're playing, someone made that. The way you're paying, someone made that. Those points you're scoring, someone made that. That guy over there snoring? Uh, well, that's not really coding, actually. But anyway, those other things are the computer game and the payment system and the points and stuff. Well, they didn't just appear. It's not magic. But truthfully, someone made those. Yes, real human beings. Actually, not just one person. It was probably a team. A team of people just like me and you and you. They learned how to code. And you can too, they learned how to code And you can too, they learned how to code And you can too, they learned how to code And you can too, yes they learned how to code And you can too Actually, I just wanted to know, where's the bathroom? Hardware, software, overware? Hardware, software, everywhere! Hardware, software, over there? Hardware, software, underwear. Hardware is the stuff you can see and feel, but please don't eat it, it's not a meal. This screen, this keyboard and cords for power, these speakers and this printer, but not this flower. Software is actually something you can't see, it's inside the hardware. Don't believe me, it's the instructions that tell the computer what to do, and we call this coding and you can do it too. Hardware and software, they need each other, like I need pizza and a baby bird needs a mother. Actually, you can't have one without the other. They're like a family, like a sister and a brother. You want an example? Okay, take this screen. It uses both to work. You'll see what I mean. This screen is the hardware you already know, but software inside tells the screen to turn on and glow. Then it will tell it just what to show, like some words and image or this video. But without any software, I'm gonna be frank. If you didn't have no software, the screen would just be blank. Just be blank, y'all. Be nothing here. Nothing works without software. Hardware, software, over where? Hardware, software, everywhere. Hardware, software, over there? Hardware, software, underwear. Let's divide up the hardware some more. Make some slices into one input and two output devices. One makes things go into the computer and the other things come out. You'll understand this, I have no doubt. With a keyboard you type words and this is input. input. A printer can print words and this is output. output. With a mic you can sing and this is input. input. A speaker makes sounds and this is output. output. And with the screen, yeah, especially these days, well, things with the screen can actually go both ways. Some screens you can input stuff with your fingers. You can click and swipe or type stuff with your fingers but a screen you know we talked about this before can output colors and pictures and videos and more touch screens are input and output devices you know what i'm saying hardware software over where hardware software everywhere hardware software over there hardware software underwear hardware software over where 
Hardware, software, everywhere. Hardware, software, over there? Hardware, software, underwear. steps from the start until it's done if you don't it won't work and that's no fun it's called sequencing and it's the order of things it's how we gotta talk when we talk to machines okay look right here we got a game made of squares you got five moves to go from here to there you can move on the white squares not the brown so what's the right sequence using left right up or down are you ready give it a try okay um go up go up go up go right Go right. Okay. Um. Go up. Go right. Go right. Go down. Okay. Go up. Go right. Go right. Go up. Go right. You gotta say the right steps from the start until it's done. If you don't, it won't work, and that's no fun. It's called sequencing, and it's the order of things. It's how we gotta talk when we talk to machines. Let's think about brushing your teeth. What's the right steps when you brush those teeth? Before you go to bed and say goodnight, there are four main steps. Gotta get the sequence right. Okay, here we go. Let's give it a try. All right, I can do this. Brush, rinse, open mouth, Put toothpaste on. Ah, uh, uh, put put toothpaste on. Rinse. Brush. Open mouth. Oh, put toothpaste on. Open mouth. Brush. Rinse. You gotta say the right steps from the start until it's done. If you don't, it won't work, and that's no fun. It's called sequencing, and it's the order of things. It's how we gotta talk when we talk to machines. You know what? Let's get way more specific. Many other steps actually go with it. To brush your teeth proper, gotta know what to do. Let's go step by step until it is through. Okay, give it a try. Be real specific for me now. First, you find the bathroom. Then you open the door. Then you go to the sink. Then you get your toothbrush and the toothpaste. Then you put the toothpaste on the toothbrush. Then you open your mouth. Then you put the toothbrush in your mouth. Then you brush back and forth. Then you take the toothbrush out. Then you spit in the sink. Then you rinse your mouth and the toothbrush. Then you put the toothbrush back. Then you look at your clean teeth in the mirror and smile and say, "You are the best toothbrusher ever." Wow, that's a lot of steps. There are so many. Double check to make sure you didn't miss any. Gotta tell the computer exactly what to do, 'cause if the sequence isn't right, it won't work for you. You gotta say the right steps from the start until it's done. If you don't, it won't work, and that's no fun. It's called sequencing, and it's the order of things. It's how we gotta talk when we talk to machines. They have a name. And variables have values that can change. Variables a part of coding foundation. Variables store important information. So just like this box can hold this ring, a variable is something that can hold another thing, like a name or a date or a high score or a place, your favorite food, and so much more. You might be confused. Have no fear. We can try a little example here. Say this bucket's a variable. We'll give it a name. Whatever's in this bucket, we'll call bucket thing. Bucket thing is a frog. Bucket thing is a bear. Bucket thing is a pizza. Bucket thing is underwear. 
Now, variables can have a type. Are you listening? They can have a type, and here's the main three. The variable types when you're talking to machines are strings, numbers, and booleans. A string is not a number. It's actually made of letters, like your name or the words. I really like sweaters. A string is text. You know characters and letters, just like the sentence, a bird has feathers. Here's a string variable about what day it is. We will name this variable day of the week. Day of the week is Monday. Day of the week is Tuesday. Day of the week is Wednesday. Day of the week is Thursday. Ah, variables. They have a name. And variables have values that can change. Variables. A part of coding foundation. Cause variables. Store important information. So string variables, what do they come for when there are words and text to store? What if you have numbers like numbers and math? A number variable is up to the task. Numbers are numbers and nothing more. No letters or pictures, just a number like a score. Numbers are numbers and nothing more. No letters or pictures, just a number like a score. Here's a number variable to remember the score. We will name this variable my point score. My point score is two. My point score is four. My point score is eight. My point score is one million. So, number variables. What are they good for? When there are numbers and numbers to store. But there's a simpler one. It can be one of two things called a Boolean variable. It's not a number or a string. Boolean. There's a funny name. It just means true or false. No in-betweens. Boolean. It can only be two things. Either true or false. No in-betweens. Here's a Boolean variable to check if you're asleep. We will name this variable, are you asleep? Are you asleep is true. Are you asleep is false. Are you asleep is true. Are you asleep is false. Ah, variables. They have a name. And variables. Have values that can change. Variables. A part of coding foundation. variables. Store important information. What are loops? They are instructions that repeat. 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 Computers love to repeat things and they never get bored. Loops tell them what to repeat and repeat some more. And loops will also help to save a lot of time by repeating many things so you don't have to keep writing line after line after line after line after line after line after line. Now let's say you got a robot friend here and you want to teach it to climb the stairs. You can't just say, go climb those stairs because it's not going to know what to do when it's there. You got to be specific. Give it a try. Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Good. Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. That's Left it. Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Keep it Left up. Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Super. Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Almost Left there. leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. I did it. Well, that's all good, the robot got to the top, but hold on a minute, that's right, stop. You said a lot of the same things again and again. Is there a better way to say everything? Yes, there is, that's where a loop comes in. Aw, thanks, loop, what, what a great, great friend. friend. Instead of writing everything many, many times, you put it in a loop and write it one time. Set up a loop, put the stuff inside, then there's only one thing left to decide. That's to tell the loop how many times to repeat. Yep, that's it, the loop's pretty much complete. So let's return to our robot climbing the stairs, okay? We got the steps in a loop and soon it's on its way. But let's add other stuff in the loop for fun today. How about we get the robot to shout hooray? All right, let's run the loop and see what happens. Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Hooray! Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Hooray! Left leg up, forward down. Right leg up, forward down. Down. Right leg up, forward, down. Hooray. Left leg up, forward, down. Right leg up, forward, down. Hooray. Left leg up, forward, down. Right leg up, 
forward, down. Hooray! What are loops? They are instructions that repeat. Three more. What are loops? They are instructions that repeat. Two more. What are loops? They are instructions that repeat. One more. What are loops? They are instructions that repeat. No more. Conditions, conditions, we use conditions all the time But what are conditions? They are things that decide Conditions in coding, well you use them when You need to make a decision Usually they have an if and a then And you can use them again and again you use conditions in your life every day When you think about choices, when you work and you play You use ifs and thens in your lives every day Listen up and I will throw some examples your way If you are hungry, then you should eat If you are smelly, then you should wash your feet If you finish your homework, then you can watch TV And if you want to learn, then listen to me Conditions, conditions, we use conditions all the time But what are conditions? They are things that decide Yeah! Imagine you are coding a simple game to shoot a ball into a hoop is the aim. Two points for each ball that goes in. But now this brings up a good question. How is the computer gonna know when to add two points when the ball goes in? I think it's time to use a condition. And of course it's gonna have an if and a then. Let's go. So... Points are stored in a variable called the score. The score starts at zero, but there's gonna be more. Next, hmm, what are we gonna do? Set up a true-false variable is what we'll do. We'll call this new variable, is it in? It's set to false when you start the game, but it'll change to true if the ball goes in. Now we'll set up a condition that will check the value of is it in? And if it's true, you know what we're gonna do? Then the score will go up by two. Oh yeah, you're doing it. Just remember, a condition uses an if and then to plan the path of a decision. Yeah, a condition uses an if and then to plan the path of a decision. Yeah, a condition uses an if and then to plan the path of a decision. Yeah, a condition uses an if and then to plan the path of a decision. Conditions, conditions, we use conditions all the time But what are conditions? They are things that decide are pieces of code and they're terrific you create them to do something specific and functions can have all the stuff we talked about before like variables loops conditions and more the best thing about functions is they are designed to be used and reused many 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 times a function is a bunch of code that has a set of steps to complete a specific action. And you may not realize it, but in a way you complete functions in your own life every day, all the time. When you brush your teeth, or tie your shoes, or get on the bus, to go to school, you're completing a set of steps in order to do something specific. And that's just like a function. Functions are pieces of code and they're terrific. You create them to do something specific. And functions can have all the stuff we talked about before, like variables, loops, conditions, and more. The best thing about functions is they are designed to be used and reused many, many, many times. 
So, let's create a function together to get our robot friend to roast us a marshmallow. The first thing we need to do is name the function to remind us what it does, so we are going to name this function roast it. Inside the roast it function, we need to code the steps, which are find a marshmallow, poke the marshmallow through the stick, hold the stick over the fire, wait until the marshmallow is brown but not black, take the stick away from the fire, pull the marshmallow off, and voila! Mmm, we just made a function. Functions are pieces of code and they're terrific. You create them to do something specific. And functions can have all the stuff we talked about before, like variables, loops, conditions, and more. The best thing about functions is they are designed to be used and reused many, many, many times. So, let's talk about the best thing about functions. They are reusable. Remember all those steps that went into creating the function? Well, the next time you want to roast a marshmallow, you don't have to say all those steps again. You can just call the name of the function. Want another marshmallow right now? Just call roast it. Want one tomorrow? That's right. Just call roast it. What about in six months, uh-huh? Roast it. And here's another cool thing. Functions can be created to be adaptable. You could use the same function with the same steps and bring in other things to roast like hot dogs. I sure do love functions. Functions are pieces of code and they're terrific. You create them to do something specific. And functions can have all the stuff we talked about before like variables, loops, conditions and more. The best thing about functions is they are designed to be used and reused many, many, many times. that bug. Bugs be gone. Get that bug. Bugs be gone. Find that bug. Bugs be gone. Get that bug. Bugs be gone. Bugs, 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 bugs be gone. Well, when you are coding, there is just one thing you come across again and again. It's called a bug, and they are always around, but you gotta find them. They need to be found. Now, it's not like a real bug or a real insect. A bug's just a name for a mistake. Something you put into the code that's not supposed to go in it. Or you left out something you were supposed to put in it. Now, bugs in coding, you see them all the time. Just like the mood at night or the sun in the daytime. And even though a bug means something is wrong, don't get mad. Just find it, fix it, and move along. Find that bug. Bugs be gone. Get that bug. Bugs be gone. Find that bug. Bugs be gone. Get that bug. Bugs be gone. Bugs, 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 bugs be gone. Well, after you find bugs, you can fix them too. It's called debugging. It's an important thing to do. Can you prevent bugs? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, it's hard to do, but let me give you some advice. The next time you're coding, before you start, make a plan. Wouldn't that be smart? Ask yourself, how can this design happen? Design it first. Use a paper and pen. If bugs are frustrating you, then take a break. Go for a walk and come back with a fresh brain. Bug hunting can even be fun. Go on and get them. Those bugs better run. Find that bug. Bugs be gone. Get that bug. Bugs be gone. Find that bug. Bugs be gone. Get that bug. Bugs be gone. Bugs, 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 bugs be gone. Break it down. If you got a problem, let's break it down. Got so many problems, just break it down. Got a brand new challenge, come on, break it down. Lift your hands up and face the crowd. A big problem is big, some might say large. And if our problem is big, you gotta take charge. You might think, how are we gonna get this done? We'll just break the big problems into smaller ones. Yeah, break it down. Break it down. Break it down. 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 Break it, break it down. Okay, so when we are coding, it's a good idea to think about bigger problems as a bunch of smaller problems. Let's try and use a real life example to 
give you an idea of how to do this. All right, you've got a little brother, right? Yeah. I want you to teach him how to bake a cake. That's a pretty big challenge, isn't it? Yeah. So, first, try and break it down into the main steps. Okay, well, first you need stuff. Like what kind of stuff? Um, the things that go in the cake. The ingredients? Yes, the ingredients, like the flour and the eggs. Okay, great. What else do you need? Well, the, the things to make it with, like a bowl and maybe a mixer. Let's call them the tools. So if you have the ingredients and the tools, what do you do? Well, you mix everything like it says. Like what says? The recipe. Right. You need to follow the recipe steps correctly using the ingredients and the tools. Then what? You need to bake the cake. Yes. You need to bake the cake in the oven. And we will need to know the temperature and the length of time. Then what? We take it out of the oven. Then? We decorate the cake. Yes. So this is great. You took a big problem, baking a cake, and broke it down into four main smaller steps. Ingredients and tools. Mix. Bake, then decorate. Now it seems easier to do. Break it down. If you got a problem, let's break it down. Got so many problems, just break it down. Got a brand new challenge, come on, break it down. Lift your hands up and face the crowd. So, we've broken things down, but guess what? In each of these steps, there are even more things that can be broken down. Let's look at the first step, ingredients and tools, and think about what other challenges could come up. Oh, there won't be any more challenges. You just get all the ingredients and that's it. Oh, really? And where do you get the ingredients from? That's easy, from the kitchen. And where in the kitchen? Uh, from the cupboards, and also the fridge. And what if you don't have all the ingredients? Oh, well, you get them from the store. And do you have money to pay for them? Well, not really. And can you go by yourself? N no. I'd have to ask my mom and dad. That's right. So you see, all of these challenges or problems also have their own little challenges and problems. When we are coding, we need to try and think about and then solve all of the little challenges in order to solve the bigger challenges. A big problem is big, some might say large. And if a problem is big, you gotta take charge. You might think, how are we gonna get this done? We'll just break big problems into smaller ones. If you got a problem, let's break it down. Got so many problems, just break it down. Got a brand new challenge, come on, break it down. Lift your hands up and face the crowd. If you got a problem, let's break it down. Got so many problems, just break it down. Got a brand new challenge, come on, break it down. Lift your hands up and face the crowd. You can do it. I can do it. You can try. I can try. I will do it. You will do it. I will try. Just like learning how to stand and learning how to walk or learning how to tie your shoes, tell the time or talk. These are skills that you didn't understand right away. You need it practice all the time, in fact every day. And look, little by little, and bit by bit, you got better, yeah, you got it. And maybe people helped, help show you the way. And you made mistakes, but that's okay. Because, because you can do it. I can do it. You can try. I can try. I will do it. You will do it. I will try. Now look at that mountain. Can you get to the top? I think you can just. Start and don't stop The road may be windy And rough and long That's okay Just remember this song There will be many challenges As you go along And there'll be many times Where you get things wrong But if you look deep Inside your heart and your mind There's a little voice That you will certainly It will say, it will say, you can't.
can do it. I can do it. You can try. I can try. I will do it. You will do it. I will try. You can do it. I can do it. You can try. I can try. I will do it. You will do it. I will try. You can do it. I can do it. You can try. I can try. I will do it. You will do it. I will try. Can try. I'm trying. I, I will, will do, do it. it. I, I will, will try. try. Wow. I kind of want to learn it all again. Well, you can. I can do it? You can do it. I can try. You can try. <laughs>